Hey everybody, this is Dallas Goldtooth with Indigenous Rising Media and the Indigenous Environmental Network, We're live streaming live from Bonn, Germany. We're here at the United Nations Climate Change Conference, also known as COP23. <coughs> and this, uh, we're in the Bula Zone, which, three, which is the official, like, you have to have, like, accreditation. I don't have my pass somewhere, actually, I should find my pass. You have to get wear passes to get in here. Um, and we just completed a press conference, a first press conference of the U.S. People's Delegation. The U.S. People's Delegation is a coalition of various organizations from the United States, um, representing everywhere, everywhere from nonprofit organizations to grassroots groups. Um, and the Indigenous Environmental Network is a part of the U.S. People's Delegation. We're actually a part of the It Takes Roots Delegation, which is a whole group of people, right? So we have uh, Indigenous Environmental Network, we have the Climate Justice Alliance, we have grassroots, global grassroots justice, um, and we have different representatives of those group alliances here. So I want to introduce one sister here. All right. Hello. Ready? And introduce hi. yourself. Say hi. <laughs> Katia Aviles from Organización Boricua. And why, what, what brought you here? What, what, why are you here? And what's the story that you bring? Well, the reason that I was sent here, <laughs> yes. we have had two major hurricanes hit the Caribbean and that's a direct result of climate change effects, climate induced temperature increases. You're, and and you're, you're from Puerto, Puerto Rico, the yeah. Caribbean, yes. so the Caribbean region has been hit by quite a few storms in this past year and that those events are going to become less uncommon. So we're going to be hit by many more heavy storms and our entire growing cycles have been altered. The water regimes has changed. We just came out of very heavy drought. So we're here facing those people that are making the decisions that cause climate change. So hopefully they'll take bold action and stop fossil fuel emissions. So what does, because we're, so um, their organization, our organization is part of the Climate Justice Alliance and um, what what is just recovery? So it's a big, it's a fancy word, hashtag just recovery. What does that mean in the, in the context of, of Puerto Rico and other Caribbean islands? Uh, what does that, how, define that for folks? All right, so defining that um, on the ground, it has meant quite a few things. One is making sure that whatever imbalances of power and vulnerability were before are not recreated when we rebuild. We don't want to rebuild the past Puerto Rico or the past Caribbean. We want to address those injustices from the beginning. And one of the things that needs to happen is that renewable energies need to be available for all people. And equitably and justly, we need to address systemic racism. We need to address access to food and healthy food, not just canned food brought from outside. We need to recover our culture in order to do that. And part of recovering our culture includes um, the crops that we grow. We have been kind of assimilated to eat U.S. food or U.S. dumping, for example, chicken legs. Mm -hmm. So, But we have small livestock that we use to eat. And we have um, grains, tubers, that were actually what survived the hurricane and what we're eating in right now, you know, coconut water, all those things that were lost as part of our culture. So just recovery includes recovering our culture, mm -hmm. recovering our forms of energy for the Caribbean, which means solar, wind, and water. We're in the middle of the ocean, the big, big ocean that Trump talked about. So, <laughs> uh, Are you excited to be here? And what what have you experienced? Also, you can see me yes. <laughs> here. I'm a, Actually, I'm going to make it go a little bit higher up. So uh, just to recap, uh, this is Dallas Goldtooth, the Indigenous Rising Media. We're here at the COP23 in Bonn, Germany. And we're talking with a couple of folks of the U.S. delegation. This is Katia. And how, um, what is your re response so far? You've been here for a couple of days now. Uh, what, what, what are you experiencing so far? It seems... Honestly, it seems a little disconnected from the, where I've been working. I've been working for the past month and a half, two months on getting food, getting just solar lights, getting water to people and, and addressing those impacts and that direct effect of Irma of not having, you know, having mosquitoes and this thing of gas and diesel generators all over the place. So being here in air conditioning with all these lights and all the people that are here has been it's, it's a, quite a shift, so mm -hmm. it's, it's been a little disconcerting, but I'm glad to see so many other people that are coming together, facing similar difficulties, and overcoming those difficulties with very similar solutions. So 
it's something about learning from each other. Yesterday I was in a panel with someone that was from the Pacific Islands and she was wearing a frangipani, mm -hmm. which for us, a, a variation of the frangipani in the Caribbean is the aleli. And mm -hmm. we have a very, it's a beautiful flower. That is one of my favorite flowers actually. And it turns out that her story about reclaiming their culture and losing their culture to Australia was very similar to our story and losing our culture to the US. Mm -hmm. So being able to connect with her on that level and being able to share the stories is, is also a part of, of helping to heal our peoples. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that I get to do that more with great people like you, Alex. Wow. <laughs> I appreciate it. So Katya's gonna be here for, how long are you here for a week, two weeks? I think week. the 13th, 14th. Okay. So awesome. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for representing. If someone said thank you for protecting Mother Earth, thank you for fighting for Puerto Rican. Thank you. Awesome. So a major uh, aspect, you know, why we're here, we're calling for climate justice. And climate justice is more than just ecological preservation or conservation. It is to recognize the inequities within our society um, that cause an adverse effect upon poor peoples, indigenous peoples, communities of color, um, all across the globe when it comes to the climate chaos that is ca being caused by industrial society, that is being caused by um, just constant rapid expansion of fossil fuel, of greenhouse gas emissions. And on our side, we are demanding that not only do we try our very best, or not try, but do our very best to institute a belief, a perspective, a cosmovision that puts us in a better, more balanced relationship with Mother Earth, but we're also demanding that in that process of transition, that process of reimagining re our relationship to Mother Earth, we also build a more just society and that we recognize the inequities that are, uh, that are part of this our, our, our reality right now. Um, it's, a, it's a huge call to action, and but we're not afraid, and, it, and it's what our people deserve and we demand. So I'm going to sign off from here, talk to you guys later, and look forward to uh, more updates as we go along. We have a number of other Indigenous Rising producers and content providers here. Talk to you later. Peace.